Today I'm going to introduce to you how to use the different selection tools that they have in Photoshop as well as the mask tool that you use along with the selection tools. So I've got a couple photos up here. Uh, this is the first one because I can use uh, most of the tools with that. The selection tools, the very top tool is the move tool and then the next one, see if you hover it will tell you and if I, um, any of the ones with a little um, arrow thing next to the very bottom right corner have more selection or other tools underneath of them. So if I click and hold, then it pops up with my other selection tools. Rectangle, elliptical, single row, single column. Click and hold, lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool. Then I have the quick select and the magic wand. So I'm going to show you guys how to use these just in order. So the square is exactly what it says. It's a rectangle or a square. So if I click and drag, uh, I can make it rectangle. I can deselect that. If I click and drag while holding the shift key, it will stay in a perfect square. Across the top, it allows me to add to that. So I can add to a section. It sort of works like a Venn diagram. So it's going to add to the section that I um, already have. So now it's getting kind of this hunky edges. I can also use it to take away. So I now just took away those sections and I can also use it again like the Venn diagram but in reverse. So it's only going to keep the sections that overlapped. So it's just going to keep that section in the middle. Okay, so that's that one. The circle or elliptical works the same way. I can just click and drag and I just have a random elliptical. Control D is deselect. If I hold shift while clicking and dragging, I get a perfect circle. And again, those same options up top apply. The lasso tool is sort of like a pen tool. So I can pick a random area and just draw and go back to the middle. And oh, I still have it on a feather from a different demo. Let me deselect that, put this on zero. So let me go with that again. So I can pick a random shape, like a pen, and that would be the area that I have selected. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the mask tool so you can see what I have selected. So there's the area I have selected. Okay, De um, same thing goes up here. We can add to and take away, deselect, click and hold. The polygonal lasso tool is for straight edges. So that's one of the reasons I picked out this particular photo. So I can click, 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 and click. And then now I have um, straight edged book selected. Okay, deselect. Magnetic lasso tool is super awesome. It will snap to the edge of whatever it's close to. So as long as I stay pretty close to the edge of this stuff, then it will uh, snap right to the edge. If I get kind of out here willy-nilly, then it's not going to know where the edge of the book is that I'm looking for, right? It's going to search for something, but it's not necessarily going to know. So I can like bring it around like this and it's going, I don't know what you're talking about. And I bring it back to the top. And if you can see, as I get closer, there's a little circle that pops up right next to my uh my tool magnet thing. It's a little circle in the bottom right part of the tool right there. That means it's a closed shape. So that means that I went all the way around and I'm back to the beginning again. Um, with some of these lasso tools, especially like the magnetic one, um, the polygonal, the pen one, any of those three, especially under, you know, under this one, oops, sorry, this one, um, it's nice to remember, pick a spot that you can remember where you started uh, so that um, it doesn't keep going. Because if you don't go back to the beginning where you get that little circle, then it's just going to keep going and going and going and going. And kids get frustrated and they're like, I don't know how to make it stop. If you can't make it stop, double click and then it will just pick that random space. Okay, so deselect. So that was lasso, polygonal, and magnetic. These last two are the quick select and the magic wand. I'm going to switch to a different photo to show you those two, just because this one's got more variances in it. Um, this is me at graduation this summer. Um, so the quick select is super cool and I can change the size of that. 
um, I'll make it a little bit smaller. And again, you can do your initial selection, do your uh, add to, do your takeaway. So I just click and drag, and it's really smart, and it knows kind of what I'm looking for. Okay, so it's looking for edges of things, but then you can see sometimes it gets areas that I don't want. So I go up and do takeaway, bring this through here, and it still is really good about getting my edges. Okay, I'm gonna do my add to again, get my face. Continuing down, it's completely looking for the edges of things. It's really, again, smart tool. I do take away because I got part of this blue that I didn't want. This girl's shoe. Um, add to. I should be able to go and add to the rest of the photo. And I'm missing this part of my gown. I can look in the math tool and see what I got. And I'm pretty close and I need to clean up some edges. I'm going to show you how to clean up the edges now just because I have it um, here and available. So I'm going to zoom in. My zoom tool is here. I can zoom in by clicking and dragging. And the math tool is super cool because it helps me clean up these edges that otherwise I'd sit there clicking back and forth trying to clean up. I use it with my paintbrush tool. And while it's on black and my opacity is on 100%, I'm going to make my brush bigger. I can give it sharp edges or fuzzy edges. In this case, I want sharp edges. Make it not quite that big. I'm going to go, I'll just slide it. There we go. So I will bring this through here and get rid of those sections that it picked that I didn't necessarily want. Go along the edge here. There's somebody standing behind me there, here, and I'm going to show you guys how to do this hair stuff a little bit better in a second. Come along my edges and get these areas. Now if I have an area that I want but I missed, like, I don't know. <laughs> There's an area I wanted, but I missed it. Okay, then I use these little arrows down here next to the black and white, and I toggle back to the white, and then I can paint in areas that I may have missed that I want to have selected. Okay, I'm going to control zero so it's back to um, full screen, arrow out of here, and now I can do anything I want with the selected area in between. I'm going to deselect. And I'm going to show you this last um, selection tool, which is the magic wand. And it's really cool. Um, again, you can do your initial selection. You can add to, you can take away, and you can do like the Venn, Venn diagram thing. Usually starts at a tolerance of 32. And I'm going to click, where should I click? Right above my eyebrow. So right here. So I can try to click in the same spot every time. So I'm going to click. And you can see the area that it selected. Okay. I'm going to deselect that, and I'm going to try to click in that same area, but I'm going to change my tolerance. I'm going to take it down to like 10. Put my magic wand back in the same spot, and click, and you see how it's got a much smaller area. Okay, deselect again. I'm going to show you a tolerance of like 100. I'm going to click, and now it's got like most of my face, right? And I can continue to add to that by clicking. Um, but what it's looking for is tonal values. So let me undo that one. So it's looking for other areas that are as dark as my eyebrow where I just clicked. So when I clicked, it took all of those dark areas and it selected those as well. Okay. I'm going to undo that one. I'm going to show you what it does on my hair. And this is what I say when you have this. I mean, this is blue dye in my hair. Um, and this is orange because their colors are blue and orange. Um, but if uh, you don't want to have like a helmet head, you have somebody with kind of fuzzy hair um, or curly hair, this is a great way to select areas. Uh, maybe the tree, that kind of thing. Um, you can select areas. I got this really high. Select areas that, um, oops, what's it doing? Sorry. Deselect. So I can select areas that are a little more um, 
I guess, less uniform um, so that I can not have, um, let's say if I had a picture of a tree, I would not have to have like the outline of the tree. And in if I'm trying to get rid of something, I can uh, just get rid of the tree parts or the behind the tree parts because, uh, you know, trees are usually see-through. So that sort of a thing. Same thing with hair. Hair and trees are the, the most often that I would use this particular tool with. And that is all the selection tools. Remember these four? These three and those two. I guess I didn't show you single row, uh, mostly because I don't know why you would use it. So I'm going to click. So there's my single row. In order to see what, what happened, I got to zoom way in. So I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm starting to see the actual pixels of the photo. So what it did was it picked one row of pixels out of the however many hundreds and thousands of pixels are in this photo. It picked that single row of pixels. So again, I've never used it. I'm not sure why I would use it, um, but it is an option as well. And control D or select, deselect um, is the way to get out of the selection that you have. That's it.